In this example, we're going to take a vector file previously created in the software and using the vectors in the file, we'll look at modeling the sign using the modeling tools. We'll also look at how we can incorporate free clip art that comes with the software to complete the design. To finish, we'll walk you through the toolpath setup to cut the sign that you can see here. So let's go to File, Close. So let's start by opening an existing file. So from the shell sign project folder, we're going to open shell sign vector drawing.clb 3D. So here is a file that I've made earlier. We've got a series of vectors here. And if we go over to this icon here, we can look at tiling our windows so that we can see the 2D view on the left and we can see the 3D view on the right hand side. So in order for us to create components to create our ocean drive model, we can simply go ahead to the modeling tab and that's located the second tab here. And if I click on that, that will open up the modeling tab. And so on the top section of the modeling tab, I have all of the tools to create and edit 3D shapes. And then on the bottom here, we have what we call our component tree. And this is where we can view and organize our components into levels and see the results of the components and their levels, their order in the list and their combined modes all in the 3D view. And this is what we call the composite model. Now, as we have no components here, we're not displayed anything here in the 3D view. All we can see here is our modeling plane. And so by default, we have a level here. We can see it's called level one. And if we create any components now, they'll be added into this level. Now the level concept is a smart way for me to organize my components. I can add multiple levels. We can change the combined modes of those levels and the components within those levels to create the desired composite model. So the way we're going to build this up, we're going to start by looking at creating the base shapes for our sign. So we're going to take this vector here and we're going to look at using the create shape tool whereby we could apply a curved profile to this shape to create a base. We're then going to follow that up by creating a border whereby we're going to take this vector here along with this vector. We're going to look at sweeping this profile between those two vectors using the two rail sweep modeling tool. So as the first shapes we want to create are going to form the base shape. Let's go ahead and organize our levels right from the get go. So we're going to right click and we're going to rename level one and we're going to call this one base and then we can click and now we can go ahead and we can start to create the shapes. So we're going to start by taking this vector here and we're going to go into the create shape tool. So in the create shape form we have a series of profiles to choose from along with an angle that we can specify. So we've got curved profiles, angled, we've got various concave and smooth profiles, flat profiles, along with a custom vector profile. Now we're just going to look at creating a basic curved profile. So it's going to assign a curved profile to this selected closed vector that we have here. We can give that an angle. We could use a slider here. If we let go, we can take a look and see how that looks here in the 3D view. So you can see that is very bulbous here. So we could look at reducing the angle. Or we could put in precise values if we wanted to by simply typing them in. So we could put 30 in there and then take a look at that. And you can see we have a very shallow dome. So I think that's perfect for the base shape of our sign. So we can just put that in Z and then we can give that component a name. So here we're just going to call this one Dome and then we can simply press apply and then we can close out here. We can see now we have a component added to our component tree in our base level. And if I select that, you'll see that my 2D grayscale is selected here in the 2D view and I also have a 3D representation of that component highlighted here in the 3D view. 
So that's what my part looks like so far. So let's just pop that in C. And then what we can do is we can go on to create the border shape. So we're going to go in to the two rail sweep tool. So if you click on that, that will open up the two rail sweep where we're able to select two vector rails. So we're going to take this one here, hold down shift, and we're going to select this vector here. And we're going to tell the software we want to use these two vectors as our rail selection. So if we click on that, it will transform those vectors into drive rails. All we need to do then is select a profile. We can see we've got an open vector here, and then we can sweep that between the two vector rails to create our shape. So here we can simply click on that and then what we could do is we could simply undraw this option here to fill the centre of the inner closed vector rails, undraw sweeps between spans and then we can give this one a name, we'll just call this one border and then we can simply press apply and we can take a look at that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So we'll just put that in C and then we can close out now that we're happy with that. We can see the border component is in our component tree adding on top of our dome shape and we can see the result of that there in the 3D view. So far we've created shapes using vectors and the modeling tools. Now the next set of shapes we're going to look at are going to be imported into our session where we'll look at using some of the free clip art that comes with the software to complete our design. Now I want to bring in a banner that will blend into the base shape that we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to organise our component tree by introducing another level. So we're going to go in and right click on the base level. We're going to use this option here to insert a new level. We're going to right click, we're going to rename this level and we're going to call this one banner. At the moment, the banner level is currently adding on top of the base shape. Now, if I was to add the banner component into this level, it would be adding on top of the actual base shape that we can see here. Now, as I said earlier, I'd like it to blend in to the actual sign itself. So we want that to be merging with the base level. So we're going to alter the combine mode of this level by right clicking on that, go to combine mode and then use the option here to merge. So any components that I add into this level will ultimately be merging into our composite model. And so we're going to use this option here to import a component or a 3D model. From the project folder, we're going to import banner 11 50414. We'll open that up and that will bring that into our session. Okay, so if we take a look in the 3D view, you can see that we can only see a portion of the actual ribbon itself. And so the area of the model that overlaps the white space is what's visible here in our 3D view. So we need to look at sizing and positioning this banner. Now the size and the position of the model itself will always be dictated by wherever it was saved from in the original file that it was saved in, where this would have been centered at zero, zero. So we're going to look at a line in this. So we're going to take this component here and then we're going to go into the Align Selected Objects tool. And if we click on that, here we're able to specify how we align this component. So we want to align that to the centre, both vertically and horizontally, to our material. So we can click on that and you'll see that that automatically places that in the centre of our job. Okay, so let's just close out here. We're just going to rename our component just so it's a little bit more simplified. So we're just going to right click, rename that. We're just going to delete out all of those numbers there. And we'll just call this one banner. Okay, so the banner is in the centre of our job, so we just need to look at sizing this and then moving the actual banner in position. So with that selected, let's go over to set selected object size. 
So over here, we can alter the width and the height, whereby we can also alter that whilst linking X and Y. What that means is if I make a change to one of these values, the software will automatically alter the other value in proportion to how much we changed the other value. For example, if I alter the width here to be 13, you'll see the software has automatically input the height according to the proportion that we're changing this, which in this case is by 227.06158%. So here I can go ahead and press apply and you'll see that it's updated that there for me. So we can close out now. And now we can look at moving this down, just so it sits in line with the 451 Ocean Drive text. So with our components selected, we're actually going to move that. We can use this Move Selected Objects tool. So we're going to move that relative to its current position. And we're going to move that only down the Y axis. So we're going to move that down negative 1.6 in Y. So the reason I've put a negative number is so that we go down the Y axis. If I wanted to move that up, we'd have positive numbers. So here I could go ahead and press apply and you can see it's automatically moved that down for me by 1.6 of an inch. And that looks like it's in position now in line with our text. So let's just close out of the move selection form. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to maximise our 3D view. Now looking at the ribbon, we can see that we have these areas that are shaded in a green colour. And this is the software's way of identifying to us areas of our selected component that are currently being obscured by other components within our job. We can see that clearly here. We can see that the border is obscuring this part of the ribbon and this part here. Now we want the ribbon to stand proud of our base shape, so we need to look at adjusting the Z heights of our ribbon. So to do that, we just need to alter the properties of our ribbon component. And we can do that by going into the properties of this component by selecting that wrench icon there. So here we can adjust the shape height, we can also adjust the base height here. So we're going to look at shrinking the shape height down to 0.4 and pressing space to accept that. And you'll see that now a lot more of our ribbon is now being obscured. But what we are going to do is we're going to increase the base height. And so the base height is where we apply vertical height to the base of the component just to raise it up. So we're going to give this a base height of 0 0.15 in there press space to accept that and you can see it's been lifted up and now that ribbon is stood proud of the base shape that we have there. So you can put that in C and then we can close out of the component properties form. So next up I want to add in the decorative motif of the shell to sit on top of our sign. So as we're working with a new element of the design, let's add in a new level for our component tree. So we're going to right click on the banner level, we're going to insert a new level, we're going to right click and we're going to rename that level and we're just going to call this one details, we'll click to accept that. It's currently set to add and I'm going to leave that level set to add so that whatever I add into this level sits on top and adds on top of our current composite model. So we're going to look at bringing in some decorative clip art from the free selection of clip art that's included in the Aspire software. So to do this, we're going to go into the clip art tab. Okay, and I've downloaded my clip art and I'm going to go into the decorative section of our clip art browser and I'm just going to scroll through until I find something that I like the look of. So I'm just going to go all the way down here and I like this scallop shell. To bring that into my session, I can simply double click on that and that will bring that into my job. At the moment, we can see that it is far too big at the moment we just need to look at altering the size there. So let's go into the modeling tab. I'm just going to use this option here to set selected object size. 
So here, again, we're going to ensure that we link the X and the Y so it scales in proportion with each other. And we're just going to go ahead and change the width of this to be 4.8. And then we can simply press apply and that will accept that there. And then we can close out. And we just want to move this up the Y axis. Currently the shell is overlapping on top of the ribbon. We just want that shell sat on the dome shape here. So we're going to go into the Move Selected Objects tool. We're going to go relative to its current position, whereby we're going to go up the Y axis. And because we want to go up, we're going to keep this a positive number. And we're going to go with a value of 0 0.9. Press Apply, and we can see that it's done that there for us. We can close out here. And then we're just going to right click on this component. We're going to rename that. And we're just going to call this one Shell to simplify the name. So at this stage, we pretty much have our components ready for toolpathing. One thing that I would like to do is create a vector boundary that runs the boundary of our composite model that we have here. So let's just tile our windows. So to help keep our part organized, let's just take the vectors that we have already here, so the two border vectors along with the profile vector, we're going to right click and we're going to say move to layer, new layer, we'll call that on layer 2, we'll just switch off the visibility of that layer so that we can't see those vectors and then we'll go ahead and press OK. And then whilst we're on layer 1, what we can do then is take the shell component, hold down shift and select the dome component so that all of our components are selected in our component tree. And then we're going to use this option here to create a vector boundary around selected components. And so if we click on that, that will create a vector around the outer perimeter of all of those components. And we can use this as our machining boundary for when we run our toolpaths. So now that our model is set up, we've got our vector boundary, we can now go ahead and create some toolpaths. So this is where we're going to switch from our design tab over to our toolpaths tab. And we're going to use this icon here. That's going to temporarily close down all of the access to the design tools that we have available. And it's going to open up the toolpaths tab on the right hand side. And here we have all of the icons to create and edit our toolpaths. So the first and most important thing we need to do is go into this set option here to check over our material setup. So starting at the top, the material thickness that we are working with is three quarters of an inch. And then working our way down, we need to specify our X, Y datum position. And so for this, we're going to choose the lower left hand corner because that's typically the way most CNC machines are referenced from in the lower left. That way the X and the Y values will always be positive, but you should always pick one that's suitable for your own machine. In our case, we're going to go with the lower left here. Then we're going to specify our Z0 position. So we're going to set the Z0 on the material surface. And next up, we need to position our model within our material. Now, because we have a 3D object, what we need to do is relate where the model is going to be positioned within our material block. And before we position this, we can see that we actually have an error message here telling us that the model thickness exceeds the material thickness. We can see the model thickness here is 0.8362 and our material thickness is set to three quarters of an inch. We have two options here. We can find thicker material and alter the thickness here, or we could look at adjusting the model thickness of the model itself. So let's use the set option here. We're going to give that a new height of 0 0.55 in this case. Then we can press apply, and then we can close out here. And we can see looking at the graphic, this lighter area here, this represents the actual model in comparison to our material thickness. And we can use the slider here to position our model in our material. 
Now it's always a good idea to apply a small gap above your model here so that if there is any discrepancies in your material flatness or how you set the Z0, uh, you'll make sure that you avoid any flat spots by having a gap above. So we're going to put in a very small gap above here of 0 0.05 in there. And then we'll have our model and then we're going to have a gap below of 0.15 underneath. Then we need to specify our rapid Z gaps above the material. Uh, so that's your clearance and plunge settings. So you want to make sure that these values are high enough that they clear any clamping mechanism you may have in your job. In our case, I'm just going to go with a quarter of an inch for both of those. And you want to set your home start position and the Z gap above the material, again, ensuring that everything is safe and appropriate to your particular setup. So here and we're going to go ahead and we'll press OK. So using this vector to govern the area that we want to create our toolpaths, we can now choose the toolpath to create. Now we're going to start by creating a 3D roughing toolpath. The 3D roughing toolpath enables you to use a larger tool to hog away at the majority of the material so it's then safe for you to go in afterwards with a smaller tool to really pick out the finer details in your sign. So we're going to go over to this icon here. This is the 3D Roughen Toolpath. When we click on that, that's going to open up the 3D Roughen Toolpath form. So to start with, you need to specify the tool that you want to use. I can see currently we have a quarter inch end mill uh, selected and we can use the select option here and this will open up your tool database. And so I can check over the settings for the quarter inch end mill that matches my hardwood material set up for my desktop machine. And if you're happy with your settings, you can go ahead. You must ensure that all of your settings are safe and appropriate for your particular tool, the machine you have and the material that you are cutting into. So we're going to use the quarter inch tool here and if I wanted to make edits to that tool but not make edits to my main tool database I can use the edit option here to make various changes here and it will apply them to this tool for this particular tool path. So next up we need to specify our machine in limit boundary. In this case we have a vector to use so we're going to use the selected vector option. And so this vector is going to basically govern the area that we're actually going to machine away. Now, as we are working with a positive shape, it's a good idea for us to put in a boundary offset. And that's just so that the center of the tool doesn't just come up to the vector itself and it's actually going to go past it by the amount that we specify here so that it can cut down the sides of our model. So a good offset to use is the radius of the tool plus the machining allowance. So we're going to go with a value of 0.18 in here. Next up, we need to specify our machining allowance. So the machining allowance is a skin of material that the software will leave on the model to protect the finish so that the larger tool doesn't chip at the finished surface of the finished part. So here we're just going to leave that at 0 0.03 in this case. Next we can choose the strategy that this is going to be machined in, whether that's a Z-level strategy or a raster strategy. So Z-level will do that in Z-level steps. 3D raster strategy will actually follow the contours of our part. So we're going to do a 3D raster strategy in this case. We're going to use the option here to avoid machined areas and so that will do its best to avoid going over wherever it's already machined before. We can specify an angle, so at zero that's parallel to the x-axis. If we wanted that to go in this way, then we'd do that at an angle of 90 degrees. And so once you're happy with that, you can then go ahead and give that a name. We'll just leave that as 3D roughing. We'll get rid of the one there and then we'll just go ahead and press calculate. OK, and so once we've calculated that, the software will automatically open up the preview toolpaths form where we're able to preview our toolpath.
So the toolpaths are represented by blue lines and we can simulate the toolpath being cut in this virtual block here. Now this preview literally represents the coordinates that the software is going to tell the tool to move to in order to cut the sign out. And this is very useful for me to see the actual toolpaths here. But it's more useful for me to actually visualise the actual cutout simulation. And that's what the preview functions are for. So let's just put that in C. And then what we can do is we could go ahead and use the preview selected toolpath option. We can use this option here to draw the tool. And we can preview that with the animate preview switched on. We can get a good idea of how this is going to be machined. And what we see here is exactly what we're going to see on our CNC machine when it cuts this part out and we can see how that looks there okay so that's looking pretty good here if we wanted to we could look at altering the material that our parts being cut out of and so we could do that by going over to this sheet option here let's say I'm going to cut this out of cherry we can change that and the software will update that uh, to the material that best represents the material we're going to be machining into so let's just pop that in Z so now that we've used a larger tool to get rid of the majority of our material, we can now go in with a finer tool to machine those details. So let's close out here. We're going to go into the 3D finishing toolpath. So here we can specify a tool. So we can select tools by using the select option there. You can see currently we have an eighth inch ball nose here. And that is the tool that I would like to use. And if I wanted to make edits to this tool without affecting the tool database, then I can do that over here. Okay, so we could just look at decreasing the step over, make that 8%. We could go ahead and press OK. And then we need to move on to the machining limit boundary. So again, we're going to use that vector that we have selected already. And then we need to specify our boundary offset. So again, we're just going to go point 0.1 in this case. Then we can choose whether we want to raster that or whether we want to do that in an offset strategy. Now, as this is quite a rounded shape, I'm actually going to do this in an offset strategy here. Then we can give that toolpath a name. So we're just going to call that one 3D Finish. We'll go ahead and press Calculate and the software will just take a moment to calculate that for us. Okay, and so we can see that the lines here are much more dense and that's because we are using a much smaller tool. And so the result of that is means that the steps are much closer together. Okay, so again, what we can do then is we could just simply go ahead and preview that toolpath. Okay, so there is the 3D finished toolpath. You can see that using the 8th inch ball nose has picked up all of the detail there. So I'm super happy with what we've got there. So what we can do now is move on and think about how we're going to cut the text. So the 451 Ocean Drive text. So to do that, we're going to close out of the preview toolpaths form. Then we're going to select the text this time. We're going to come over into the VCarve toolpath. So this is where we're going to use a VBit tool to machine in between our text on top of our 3D model. So first up, we need to specify our start depth. Now the start depth for this is going to be at zero. Next up, we need to specify a tool. Okay, so in the select option, that will open up the tool database. In our case, what I'd like to use is a 90 degree half inch V bit in here. We use the select option there. And then going all the way down to the bottom of the form, we must ensure that we use this option here to project the toolpath onto the 3D model. And so what that does is it locates 
where our text is compared to our model and it uses this as the surface of the model and where it will start its V carving. Now, as we would have already done a 3D roughing and a 3D finishing toolpath, this area would be clear and it's going to start from this point on top of the surface of our banner. So here we can give that a name, we'll just call that one V-Carve and then we'll just go ahead and press calculate. We can see that the toolpath has been previewed here and we can actually simulate that by clicking on this option here to see what that looks like and that looks pretty good in there. So I'm happy with what we've got there, it's looking very nice so we can put that in C. And then now what we can do is we can look at cutting the sign out of our material block. So we're going to close out of the preview toolpath form and with the outline vector selected, so now that I've got that selected there, we're going to run a profile toolpath. So that's this first icon in the list here. So we need to set our start depth, that's going to be at zero. We're going to cut all the way through our material. So we know that our material is three quarters of an inch in there. We need to specify the tool. So the tool we're going to use is a quarter inch end mill. Okay, so I can see that's displayed there. And if we use the edit option, what we can do is we can look at increasing our pass depth. So we're going to increase the pass depth to a quarter of an inch. So we could go ahead and press OK. And that will machine that in three passes at a quarter of an inch. We're going to machine on the vectors on the outside of those vectors. Okay, so we're machining outside of the vector that we currently have selected. And then moving on down, we can go all the way down and we can just simply give this a name and we'll call this one profile. And then we can calculate that. And then we could simply go ahead and preview our toolpath. We can maximize the 3D view. And then for any waste material, for example, this area on the outside of our sign, that will be classed as waste material. We can double click on that in the 3D view and that will delete that for us. So we're just left with the sign of what would go on to machine. And so it's very important that your part looks correct at this stage. As the toolpath preview shows you a very accurate representation of what we'd see on our CNC machine if it was to go ahead and run these toolpaths. So if something doesn't look as you wanted it here at this stage, you can go back, you can make edits to the toolpaths and recalculate them until you are satisfied with the results that you'd see here in the toolpath preview. And that's what makes the toolpath preview such a powerful tool. So at this stage, we could then go on to save out our toolpath into a format that our CNC machine would understand. So we can close out here. So to save our toolpaths, we come over to the Save Toolpath icon. So here we can select all of the toolpaths in our list. We can see that they are all listed here, whereby we're going to output all visible toolpaths to multiple files. And so it will create a file for each one of those toolpaths that we can then load onto our CNC machine. And so for demonstration purposes, we're going to save that to our desktop machine that uses the post processor G code. And you need to ensure that your machine and your post processors for that machine are used here. And you can learn more about machine configuration and saving toolpaths in the related videos section for this tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and save out these toolpaths. So just save them, we'll give them a name. So we're just going to take the 3D roughing out of there and we're going to call this one shell sign and then we can simply go ahead and press save. And so if we just pull out that folder, you can see that the software has created four files for us. Shell sign one, 3D roughing, shell sign two, 3D finish, shell sign three, VCarve, and shell sign four, profile, all based on the order that they are in our list. And then we can take each one of those and run them on our CNC machine. 
So we can close out here and that's pretty much us done with this particular file. So here you've learnt how to take a vector file, create some shapes using the various modelling tools and then how to apply some toolpaths and visualise everything in our toolpath preview. So let's go ahead and save out this file. So we'll go to File, Save As and in the project folder we're just going to call this one Shell Sign and then we'll save that and you can access that from there.